Why are you always wearing a hat inside? Because it's fashion, Taylor. You should try it. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Kyle McWaters. And I'm Taylor McWaters. And this is the top 10 unusual fashion trends in history, part three. And number 10. Leather jackets. I just had to say that cool. I felt like I needed to. Okay, so how did we get from prehistoric leather to grease lightning? This warm, durable piece of clothing has been popular for many eras, but now where did it all start? Well, firstly, on the animal. The leather jacket we're used to seeing is based off the World War I jackets. That's right, German pilots wore these brown, thick leather jackets in their planes before the cooler, sleeker bomber jacket was born. From the early 1900s, we see the leather jacket really start to take off with more military use in World War II, now worn by all sides. Irvin Schott's initial design was created in 1928 and widely used by military motorcycle personnel. He named the first one the Perfecto after his favorite cigar company. It wasn't until the 1950s and 60s where we see this garment take on a sense of actual fashion with studs like McQueen and Brando repping the look in Hollywood movies and well, there it took off. Punks in the 70s and 80s, women, men, these are all everywhere now. Of course, the faux leather has also made its way into life now with the abuse and cruelty of animals. I'm all here for it, not judging. And it comes in literally every size and color and you can literally buy a leather jacket anywhere you go. Number nine, Lash Lure. Turning the calendars back to 1933, the year FM radios and drive-in movie theaters changed the world as we know it. Right on, I love both of those things, still, so much, for sure. See, not all inventions in 1933 were family friendly. Some of them were quite deadly. Like the one of a kind mascara, Lash Lure. Here we go, it'll lure you right in, easy peasy. This 1930s cosmetic contained a chemical called p phenylidamine I can't even say it, that's how you know it's bad, right? This mascara left blisters all over your face. It wasn't working, the chemicals didn't react properly for some cases, and it was horrible. Now, eventually, in 1933, there was sadly a death. One woman sadly developed an infection, a bacterial infection, and ultimately passed away because of said mascara. That same year, the before and after photos were used in an FDA display titled The Chamber of Horrors. Yeah, it was a horrible incident, but it got the attention from higher ups. Lash Lure was the first product in history that was ever removed from stores. There's a little dark fun fact for you. I guess the display at the old Chamber of Horrors did the trick. Lord. We're in the middle of something similar now though, aren't we? Cigarette packages have those horrible side effects to smoking images right there on the package, you know? The chick on the cover looks like a demigorgon from Stranger Things. You're like, Ugh, I'm all set. I'm just gonna fidget spin this. That's horrible. Number eight, sunglasses. This bright invention was first created in the 12th century China. This rough, heavy slab of carved quartz was first used in an attempt to block the sun's powerful rays while being able to protect the face and eyes. These glasses didn't have ear rods and were just held up against the face. The Inuit of North Canada have something like this as well, made out of bone or a piece of wood, carved with slits cut out of it for the eyes to see into the bright snow. The smoky glass texture of the quartz allowed the person to see through the glasses and have the rays refracted through the dark color. See, I said refracted, lots of scientific words, you know what I mean? Basically, they were just experimenting with different smoky rocks and gems in front of their face until James Oskow started making way with tinted lenses in the 18th century. The rich were wearing more and more shades until about 1939 when Ray-Ban made the aviator polarized lenses and the shades were forever changed. First pair sold for five bucks. 40 days to carve and polish for five bucks, huh? It's not a bad deal. Number seven, big foreheads. Here we go, this one's for the ladies, nice. Hit that thumbs up for this big old forehead, this bright forehead, you can see the lights off. If I stand here, that's the forehead light right here. Elizabethan foreheads, yes. Here's one I could finally lean into. My family called me a five head growing up. Little did they know I would have cleaned up shop back in the 1600s. Here we go, plucking your hairline was a sign of beauty back in the day. How amazing is that? I mean, it still is today, but it's different, right? We're kind of pulling back. We're like, you know what? No, I don't want to pluck anything anymore. It hurts, I'm done. More often than not, women in the Renaissance era wore restrictive upper body clothing. The ideal look back then was flat chested and hair plucked back, like you're a goddamn chicken. I can't even pluck this unibrow thing that I have going on here. I just shave it, I give up. Plucking hurts. I'm just gonna shave this one spot for the rest of my life. So, mad respect to the pluckers out there. Pain is beauty, I guess. Ice road pluckers. Number six, cowboy hats. Well, howdy, partner. 
<laughs> Made most popular by horse riders, farmers, and your buddy named Dougie, the cowboy hat or cavalry hat has been around for quite a long time. First started with the Mongolian riders and then taken on new shapes and forms throughout history as the wide brimmed hat. The cowboy hat is back and popularized in southern states around the early 1800s. Made out of literally any material from straw to felt, this large crown, large brimmed hat kept the sun out of your face and off your body. Hey, sun safety. It resembles the sombrero from the early Mexican use and influence. These things have been around for centuries and are still thriving. I mean, just go to any Kenny Chesney concert, you'll find about 100 on the ground after the concert. Just pick one up, put it on your head, free. Some have strings, some have feathers. The cowboy hat has made its place in fashion and practically yeehaw on forever. That's a terrible joke. Number five, bliats. Heading back to the 12th century for this gem. European men and women both rock this look, okay? Of course, sleeves that droop down all the way to the floor. Who wouldn't want a piece of that action? Walking around all slow like this for no reason. We've seen Lord of the Rings. Imagine walking around in a castle with one of these playfully just dragging behind you as you emerge from the cellar on a full moon night. Oh, my majesty. I'm gonna faint thinking about it. That's easy. Man, we need bliats back today. I wish I had a couple bliats for prom. I wouldn't have even had to ask her to dance. I would just stick my bliats out and then a queen would accompany me. Just like that. Voila. The roots for this dazzling look go back to the French Germanic origins. The word translates to our modern day use of blouse because it was the same light ghosty material. Yeah, imagine attending a meeting in a bliat blouse made of silk. Immediate write up. So fast. Number four, the bikini. I don't know why, but for some reason in every picture as a kid, I'm running around in a sexy black speedo. <laughs> You know the deal. No shorts, just thong on cheeks. I was always embarrassed by the lack of clothing and felt vulnerable, but learned growing up that that's fashion, baby. Sometimes you feel a little uncomfortable. The bikini, a controversial and even at many times illegal piece of clothing, is a piece of fashion that has been around as early as 5600 BC. And the history of the bikini can be traced back to that era. Carvings and paintings of women wearing bikini-like garments during the competitive athletic events in Rome have been found in several locations. Most of the time worn by women, the bikini went through a ton of design. Two-piece bathing suits have been seen all over the world. So what's the problem? Well, it's illegal in certain places and illegal now, still. Inappropriate use of showing off one's body could be a crime around the early 1900s. Police would just walk around around the beach and measure the length of a two-piece bathing suit. <laughs> You have the right to remain silent, anything you do or say. The 30s and the 40s, it's still pretty exotic and people were kind of shady about the idea of revealing so much skin. The 40s and the 50s comes around, starts to become a little bit more Hollywoodized, and then the 60s and 70s, it's on every magazine in America. The two-piece bikini is worn today and is a symbol of confidence and sexuality. How much do you think they go for? Number three, moon boots. Unless you're Link from the past and or future, you're not pulling off a pair of moon boots, okay? Sorry to burst your bubble. Back in the late 60s, these hot and heavy pieces of footwear were the hottest trend in town for some reason. Yeah, winter boots all year round. We love it. Fashion. But yeah, welcome to Canada. Also, we wear these 11 months out of the year. It sucks. My ankles are always hurting. Moon boots originally appeared in 1969 in Italy, and it was part of a ski wear collection, but add a little Apollo 11 moon landing into the mix, now we have a fashion trend in history. Now we all think we're astronauts and we're dragging our feet to the club in the middle of July. Once space became old news, so did the Apollo boots, sadly. We've seen these bad boys appear in modern history. Chanel, Jeremy Scott, big names are still trying, trying to bring back the moon boots. Let's bring back the moon shoes. How about that? How about a functioning pair of those? Remember the commercial? Kid jumps, grabs an apple, lands. Just false advertising at its best. Number two, high heels. The high heeled shoe or high heels or simply known as where's my heel have been a piece of fashion since the early 10th century. The design raises the heel of the wearer's foot significantly higher off the ground than the wearer's toes causing the wearer's legs to appear longer, make the wearer appeal taller and accentuate muscle tones in the wearer's legs. It's all about the calves nowadays, man, all about the calves. Typically seen as a men's garment until the mid 1500s, the high heel is a staple in today's fashion as its design and functionality hasn't changed in almost a thousand years. King Louis XIV of France made heels a standard and would have himself hundreds of pairs of gemstones, lavishly precious metal lined high heels, basically just one of the Kardashians closets. But as we all know, pain is beauty and these nasty things really f**k up your feet. Due to the structure of the high heel, this piece of fashion could be the most harmful to our bodies. Just shoving your size eights in a sexy size five crumpled up like Play-Doh all night? Yeah, that's uh, definitely gonna do it. 
And finally, number one, painted veins. Hey, from one pale human being to another, I have no idea where this came from. I, I don't get it. I don't see it at all, really. Back in the 1800s, you only had two looks to choose from, really. There was painted or natural. See, natural was light on the makeup, as you'd guess by its name, but painted, well, they meant that in a literal sense. This more vibrant look required actual paint, just lead-based paint. And the most important part of applying all this is you can't move or smile. Yeah, any emotion will cause the paint to crack. That's why all these paintings are so serious. Four more hours? Four hours? Okay. Madame X, the portrait, the famous portrait, originally painted back in 1884. At first, her straps were slipping off her shoulder, right? A little, right? But that was deemed too scandalous for the upper class society around the painting at that time. So John had to repaint the straps back on. What a joke. He's like, okay, too sexy? Okay, straps are on. There we go, we're fixed. Backlash was still so strong after John had sold the painting because her skin was so pale and you could see her veins. It was like, oh, too much. I can see through you, what the hell? Just no winning back in the 1800s, eh? Can't have spaghetti straps, can't have veins. Wait till Playboy comes out. You guys are gonna sh it. Those are the top 10 unusual fashion trends in history part three. If you want a part four or part five or six, there's a lot. There's too many. There's too many. Too many. Wait, too wait. Many. From like last year alone. Crocs? Crocs? You wanna see Crocs? Comment down below. We'll do more. I'm, I'm down. I'm Taylor McWaters. I'm Kyle McWaters. And we'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Bumblebee.